So why do we care about how far light can travel in one nanosecond? If you know what kind of processor you have, and if you have a Mac, you can find this by selecting from the Apple menu about this Mac. There'll be instructions on the website how you can do this for other operating systems. But you'll see a window like this appear that will tell you what kind of processor you have. And if you zoom that a little bit, you can see that it says we have a 2.7 GHZ Intel Core processor. What GHZ stands for is gigahertz, which means we can do 2.7 billion cycles in each second. So that means the time we have for one cycle is actually less than a nanosecond. And you can think of a cycle as the time the computer has to do one step. So it does one step 2.7 billion times in a second. That means the time for each cycle is one divided by 2.7 nanoseconds. So that means in the time the computer has for one cycle, light travels 11.1 .1 centimeters. So how far is that? So let's have a little scale here. If we have a dollar bill, that's actually quite a bit longer than 11.1 .1 centimeters. 11.1 .1 centimeters is about three quarters of the way across the bill. So within the time light can travel that distance, the computer's got to finish processing one cycle, finish at least part of an instruction. This should give you some idea of how fast the computer is operating. And this is part of the reason a processor has to be so small. If the processor was bigger than 11 centimeters, we couldn't even send light across the processor in the time for one cycle.